September 26th, it's Thursday. Quick shout out to all our Amazon drivers driving those Sprinter vans. Listen, I know you guys get a lot of hate from other drivers on the road, but I, the Garrett Bellick Show, has respect for the Amazon drivers out there. What is going on? I mean, can you imagine driving a, a Mercedes Sprinter van, having to park on a four lane highway, putting those flashers on, delivering to this little shit house? on the side of a dang highway. There's nothing you can do about it. That's what you're conditioned to Amazon nowadays. Anyways, welcome to the episode. I have a lot to talk about. The colonoscopy experience. That's what you're all here to listen to and that's all you want to know about. What a journey. It really was a long three-day journey. I'll break it down all for you. So if you're getting a colonoscopy soon and you're curious or you're going to have to get one eventually, there you go. I'll break it all down for you. But first, we pay respect to a different country every week by reviewing their national anthem. This week, our random country generator has given us Qatar Qatar in the Middle East. Here we go. Good drums. Sounds like they recorded it on a 1960s device over there. Pretty good, Qatar. Qatar. I don't know how to say it. All right, what else do we have? It, come on. Come on. Pick it up, Cutter. I don't have their Wikipedia page open, but I know they treat their employees. The labor laws in Cutter are horrible. Home of the 2022 World Cup. The capital is Doha. That's all I know off the top of my head. This sounds like it was recorded on a fucking tomato, dude. I. What are we doing in Qatar? They have all the money. It's a great developed country. Very nice. It's. A, I hear it's fun. Good bars, good nightlife. Go to Qatar. If you got the cash money to spend, consider a vacation in Qatar, the tropical oasis of the Middle East. Okay. Pick it up. Pick it up. Thursday. Leaving the office. You got to take that dump after work. Go dump it out. We always tell you it's the best part of the day. Long, long day sitting in those dockers in the office. We'll do you dirty. (laughs) So get on home. Woo. All right, Cutter. Uh, what, what is the review here? Four point. Nah, I'm going 3.8 based off recording quality. I don't know. Some SoundCloud ass recording quality there. Anyways, welcome to the show, people. We have World War II in color on the Smithsonian Channel. It's Thursday. It's 425. It's the last Thursday of September. It's already October, a month away from all the bullshit ending. Finally, let's get this election over. We survive it if we're not nuclear dust by then. Let's hope we're not. Things are getting crazy around the world. We'll touch on it briefly. But here we go. Colonoscopy experience, folks. So Monday was... The colonoscopy was yesterday, Wednesday. Monday, I had to... Was my last day of eating. So I had to eat light, you know, the eggs, the bread. No apple skins, no nuts, it was a little, it was already kind of torturous to start. No vegetables, cooked vegetables, no raw vegetables, no fruit, essentially no seeds or anything. That's on Monday. So you're eating eggs and bread and a lot of boring shit. So Tuesday's the real day. Tuesday's the day I cannot eat a liquid diet. So at 7 a.m. I was allowed one inch or eight ounce. Pretty, I mean, here's the thing with these protein drinks. I want to talk, what's the shitty aftertaste in all these protein drinks that you taste for three hours? I had the Enshore, just a shitty aspartame taste in my mouth three for three hours. I want to touch on that in a little bit. But the Enshore at 7 a.m. was a nice pick-me-up. I had three cups of coffee. You could drink clear liquids, chicken broth. I had 10,000 cups of chicken broth, three cups of coffee, four ginger ale cans. I mean, I was just a jittering fucking mess by 4 p.m. starving. Sitting there watching my parents eat corn on the cob and meat and my dad's eating homemade salsa right in front of me. It was torture. You all know how much I love to eat. Woo. I'm standing up. I have thong sandals on right now for all my people down in Florida. This is no disrespect to you. I wear thong sandals around Western Pennsylvania like it's my job to show these fuckers that I'm paying respect to Florida. Anyways, back to the colonoscopy story. So... Yeah, Tuesday was tough sledding. I also vlogged all of it, so I'll have that up on YouTube probably by Monday of next week. Coffee, chicken broth, more chicken broth, getting starving. So 6 o'clock is when the real war started. They give you a total of 24 pills you take. 
to clean out the colon completely. You could still drink water, you could still drink the broth, you could still have the coffee if you want, up until five hours before the procedure, but I just stuck to water. And at that point, I wasn't even hungry. I mean, I, it was bad for the first, till, up until about four or five o'clock after I chugged another, another ginger ale, I wasn't even hungry anymore. I can't even, that's the first real fast I've done from food. The caffeine with no no food in your system, it just turns you into another animal. I was literally just pacing around the house up. I didn't know what to do with myself, shaking like crazy, just walking up and down the stairs. I didn't, nothing felt great to do. I, I tried reading a book. I couldn't even hold the book still because I was jittering so much from the caffeine. So the prep starts 6 p.m. You take 12 pills of magnesium and uh, potassium, some sort of offshoot of those items. And then first you take a nausea pill because damn, my head was spinning even with the nausea pill. Ooh, let me catch my breath real quick. Whew, okay, so <laughs> take the pill, six o'clock. It takes 15 minutes because you have to wait a minute in between each pill and then you have to drink all this water and it doesn't really hit you. I was like, ah, this is bullshit. This ain't hitting. Oh boy, was I wrong. It was hitting hard and it just comes pouring out of you. I'm not going to get too graphic, but it you feel, <laughs> this is kind of, you feel your pipes inside of you being emptied. It was an experience like I've never felt before. So once you clear all the hard shit out, then you get to like a liquid, just the bile that's left in your colon. That's the last stand. And when you're letting that out, it's like running down your leg and it's like shooting water out of your culo, essentially. I'm just telling you people what the fuck it is. I'm sorry if some of you are grossed out by this, but six, so I took the pills at six by like eight, the fireworks started. So that lasted till about midnight. Then I actually had a pretty good break. I got three hours of sleep. Then I had to wake up at 3 a.m. and take 12 more pills, which I thought was overkill, but it was not. I needed it. And then essentially it's like urine coming out of your butt at the end of it. And that's the goal. They want you just wiped out. So where am I at? 6 a.m. Well, I need to go back. I need to backtrack all night. Obviously I'm up all night. I can't really sleep. So I'm on these down these Twitter rap. I've learned so much about Diddy <laughs> that night, Tuesday night into Wednesday, Bill Clinton's cocaine operation. I learned a lot about that and really the influence that George H.W. Bush had over Reagan, Clinton. It's crazy. George H.W. was a son of a bitch. I'll just leave it at that. And of course, Diddy, I mean, come on. I hope he doesn't get killed. I know he's in MDC. It's a horrible jail. I hope he doesn't get killed. I want Diddy to sing like a bird. Diddy needs to sing like a bird and expose the pedophile ring that is Hollywood. Anyways, back to the colonoscopy story. So that's how I spent my night. Six o'clock. No, four, five, six was horrid, folks. That's when it was just the bottom of the barrel. And your colo is just torched at the end because of all the just abuse <laughs> that it's taken all night from the emptying of the colon. And took a quick shower. Actually, I laid down. I snoozed. I had to leave around 8 o'clock. Snoozed till 7.30. Just feeling defeated. A little nervous, man. I was a little bit nervous about the procedure. It's very... You can't have any liquid five hours before or it'll get impended up in your lungs. And I guess you could die. So that's a little terrifying thought. But I was good. I followed the rules to, a, to the book. No liquid five hours before the procedure. Rainy Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. My father and I get in a Subaru and we take a little ride to the GI doctor. And like I mentioned, there's a Weinstein doctor right next to the GI doctor. And I, I said, he got to change his fucking name, bro. Got to, especially nowadays, you got can't be a doctor named Weinstein. I don't care. Well, there are Epsteins out there, so maybe it's all right. We can't always group them in with, with their heinous fellow Jewish cohorts. Anyways, anyways, so we get there and... Whew, I waited like an hour. They tell you to get there early. I mean, dude, I s twiddled around for a dang 40 minutes, you know, wasn't even ready for me. So we get in there, freezing cold, freezing cold, get me in a nice warm blanket. I'm snuggled up and I put that gown on, bro. And that next thing I'm being rolled into that room and they're playing, what's that famous Kendrick song, Kendrick Lamar and Future song, uh, that, is that the one that talks about Drake being a pedophile? No, it's a, uh, let's get it, bro. Like, uh, it's 
I don't, whatever. It's the famous Kendrick and Future song out right now that I think Metro produced. That's blasting through the operating room. I didn't, my friend's a cardiovascular perfusionist, and he's told me that the operating room is a fucking party. They got music playing there. Everyone's fucking pumped and hyped. That's pretty cool. That would be a sick part of being a surgeon. Quick single wire. Hold on. Oh, that's better. If I was a surgeon, I could do surgery to Metro Boomin and Jeezy. That would be pretty sick. So that's what that was the last thing I heard. And I'm watching the propyl, the anesthesia. I might be saying that wrong. I'm no medical wizard. And I'm watching that shit being put in my IV. And just thing you know, I'm lights out. Next thing I know, I wake up sitting upright with a glass not a, glass, a cup of water, a red solo cup with a straw in it in my hand. I, what the heck? How'd that get there? And I was drugged up, folks. Drugged up to the T. They tell you. I thought I I talked a lot of shit. I did. I'll admit. I said, I'm going to be going to the restaurant right after this, eating a gyro. Nah. I went, I went home and made two eggs high off the anesthesia. It was pretty sick. Very good eggs. I didn't even flip them. I just put a lid on them, sunny or over easy. I don't even know the terminology. I always call it sunny side up, but I think it's actually over easy. Made two over easy eggs. Didn't even have to touch them. Had that future and Metro song in my head. Made the eggs, a little bread with olive oil, and then it was nappy time. Four hour, five hour nap, woke up. And this is where shit got a little haywire. My mom, I wasn't even awake yet. She's like, listen, you need to eat this wonton soup. I'm like, mom. I don't really like Chinese food, to be honest with you. I've never had people. I don't know what it is with me. Anytime I eat Chinese food since I was, I first tried it in third grade, threw it up immediately, tried it again. I could eat the chicken and rice. That's fine. But when you throw in all the fireworks and shit, like the seafood and whatnot, it's going to get my stomach fucked. So I I think there's a ghost in here. I don't know. Someone just slammed a door upstairs. Anyways, I, the Chinese, yeah, Chinese food ain't my shit. I could eat the sushi here and there, even though I have had some horrible reactions to sushi. Oh, and the hibachi. I'll suffer through hibachi if I have to. I know, I know, I know. Everyone loves hibachi and Chinese and Japanese food. I know I'm the mi- minority in this situation. But anyways, she's trying to shove this wonton soup down my throat. I'm like, mother, I'm still feeling the effects of this anesthesia a little bit. Let's chill out with the wonton soup. And then me padre comes down. He's like, yo grape leaves and wings it's like fuck yeah grape leaves and wings what do you now you're speaking my language i speak the lebanese i speak the lebanese you know i like my grape leaves i like my middle eastern fucking greek food shout out to lebanon too i hope y'all are okay i'm sorry israel's bombing you but you gotta get hezbollah out of there somehow i guess <laughs> anyway sorry no that wasn't funny that was not funny sorry T- back to the topic about wonton i just couldn't do it y'all and she's she kept insisting she's like you need to eat this dumpling, this wonton. I said, mama, I'll be, I'll be hundred percent with you. I had wings and grape leaves. So it's just not happening. But anyways, the wonton soup battle was won. And that's pretty much the colonoscopy. Everyone, my stomach feels small. It was a good reset. It is a nice reset. If you're ever getting a colonoscopy, don't be scared. Do not be scared. It's pretty nice. That's here's the one thought that's fucking with me a little bit, especially when I lay down and I'm like, there was really an eight inch camera up my ass. That's really messing with me right now. Like how I told you how the doctor put his finger up my cooler. That messed with me for a solid four days. I just still was not the same person after that happened. I don't think I ever want that to ever happen again on my watch. If any doctor says I got to put it up there, I'm going to say, nope, no, 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 nah, nah. You could put me under, you could give me the anesthesia and put me under and put a camera up there. And then they do an endoscopy. They, I didn't have the endoscopy, but you can get an endoscopy where they put shit down your throat. I mean, whew, just the thought of that is pretty th- terrifying, everyone. All right. Overall, how would I rate the colonoscopy? A 4.7 out of 5. It was pretty solid. The prep sucked. As a food lover, someone who's a foodie, you know, that liquid diet for a day will really just... You can't be around people eating. You can't. You, I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't drink three coffees. And four ginger ales next time. Maybe do a Gatorade or something. But anyways, it was a good time. All right, y'all. Let's get into business. Dogs sniffing your ass. Now, that has to be the most embarrassing thing to do in public is if a dog, say you're around like 10 people or like you're meeting the girlfriend's family for the first time and they have dogs and the dog just comes right up. And say you even washed your ass. I'm not saying you have a dirty ass or you might. 
or you might, but it's even worse if you actually have a clean ass and the dog just comes up and <laughs> puts that nose right up your culo. It's, oh, that's one of the most embarrassing things. That happened to me a few times before in my life. I, I swear, everyone, my culo was always clean too when it happened. And I told my girlfriend that the other day. I said, listen, my worst fear is just having a dog sniffing my ass in front of people, you know? It's say you're at a business meeting and there's a dog there and the dog just starts shoving their naris up your colo. Not good, not good at all. Anyways, just wanted to get that off my chest. But yeah, let's get back to the protein drink aftertaste. What the? What is it? Can any nutritionist holler at me and let me know why are these protein shakes? Just this nasty aspartame taste in your mouth for hours. There's the one, I don't know what it, plant protein I get from the gym. It's just kind of tragic. I just want to enjoy a protein shake without that bullshit taste in my mouth for four hours. I put, I made a protein coffee. Now, why aren't people doing this? I'm surprised this is not like a billion dollar business protein coffee. I put protein shake and coffee together today and it was fucking okay. It wasn't good. Of course you could make it good, but that's just, why isn't that a thing? I don't know. People need to start making those protein coffee. The nineties were a special time in my life, y'all. And I remember the nineties were just like basketball and graffiti, you know, a lot of basketball and a lot of graffiti. Why? That's the shit I want back. I just remember, you know, living in depressed Rust Belt area, a lot of rundown buildings with graffiti. And I played a lot of basketball growing up. So we, we need to get back to the basketball and graffiti style of the nineties. That shit was cool. I'm tired of all this artsy fartsy hipster, you know, boho. What, what are we doing? Why is everyone, why are these guys wearing handbags? Why, if, if a guy is wearing one of those cross bags, you know, there's something wrong. You just know there's something wrong. I, we need to get back to the essence of American culture. I feel like American culture was at the peak in the nineties. Can anyone argue with that? I don't think so. I'm pimping out my cat for YouTube views. I mean, I'll be real with you folks. If, if the world's really going to blow up here in a couple months or if, you know, shit's really going to hit the fan. I'm just going to try and monetize the YouTube. I don't know why I didn't think about this earlier. I'm just straight up going to take a video of my cat and it's already doing well. The one I, I did the first video today on a ghost channel for subscribers, a thousand views of my cat eating breakfast. It, it has to be easy. So if I do maybe 50 of these videos, I think after 50 videos will be monetized easily, easily find a niche people and go on YouTube and let's make some cash. I'm just trying to give you ideas. What else? My dad has this article. He came down here and he's a funny man. He also is interested in Bill Clinton's cocaine operations. Bill Clinton's a bad, bad boy. And he, this was from 1996. If you're on YouTube looking at this, this is copy paper from the US Airways break room, 1996. My dad made a copy of a story about a lady in Arkansas detailing how there have been cocaine drops and how there's essentially a cocaine operation that has sprung up in Arkansas the time Bill Clinton was in charge. Ha ha ha. And then it ended up being true. But anyways, I just think it's a cool relic. Moving on. What else is going on? This is just a crazy podcast. I mainly wanted to tell you all about the colonoscopy, but also my boy, Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City. Listen, I'm a big Eric Adams fan. He's a former cop. He has New York together. He has New York on its shit. The police are everywhere. It's great. I know they have a migrant issue. Here's what Eric Adams said about that the other day. Support. And let me tell you something, New Yorkers. Never in my life have I had a problem that I did not see an ending to. I don't see an ending to this. I don't see an ending to this. This issue will destroy New York City. Destroy New York City. We're getting 10,000 migrants a month. One time we were just getting Venezuela. Now we're getting Ecuador. Now we're getting Russian speaking coming through Mexico. Now we're getting uh, Western Africa. Now we're getting people from all over the globe have made their minds up that they're gonna come through the Southern part of the border and come into New York City. And everyone is saying it's New York City's problem. Every community in this city is going to be impacted. We got a $12 billion deficit that we're going to have to cut every service in this city. 
is going to be impacted. All of us. And so I say to you, as I turn it over to you, this is some, some of the most educated. All right, folks, you get the point. Essentially, Eric Adams, mayor of New York City, has had enough of the migrant influx. So here is what happened to Eric Adams recently after he made those comments. Against Mayor Adams is the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York. His name is Damon Williams. He's a Democrat, first black lawyer to hold a position. He just completed the press conference in Lower Manhattan, uh, laying out the case against the mayor. And our NJ Burkett was inside the room listening as the U.S. All Attorney. All right, they're just bitching around. Essentially, Eric Adams was charged with bribery, wire fraud, and accepting improper campaign donations from, I believe, the Turkish consulate in, in New York City, or essentially Turkey. He accepted this money from, and everyone's calling for his re resignation. You must resign. You must resign. You must resign. Now, Eric Adams said, nah, we're fighting this shit because he knows. I don't know. I think Eric Adams is innocent. That's my dog. Eric Adams, he honored the Croatians. He honored the, he had Croatia Day. He wore a Luka Modric jersey. How can I hate on the guy? He has police every there. I was just in New York, and I thought, despite the migrant crisis that was going on, for the issues... We have, it's in good shape. He's doing a great job for how messed up everything is. So Eric Adams, fight the good fight, brother. I hope you're good. I looked into New York politicians last, well, this was part of my colonoscopy overnight up, uh, what's it called? When kids stay up all night? All nighter, duh. <laughs> this is part of my colonoscopy all nighter. Curtis Sliwa, Curtis Sliwa ran against Eric Adams in 2021 for mayor. He's a Republican nominee. Now, Curtis Sliwa is an interesting guy. I'm just going to kind of run you through his life, and then we'll play one of his YouTube videos. He is from Brooklyn, and he started the Guardian Angels in 77. He created the Magnus Magnificent 13. They were essentially a New York subway group, a rogue group that went around fighting crime on the subway. They also... Had groups all around the country, Miami and everything. So, yeah, you, like pretty good dude. Pretty good guy. He got that going on. He did he did fabricate a story <laughs> where a bunch of guys apparently jumped him and beat him up, but it didn't happen. He made it up. But still, Eric, or not Eric Adams, Curtis Sleebwa was doing great with the Guardian Angels trying to get those subways in better shape. Fast forward to 1992. Sliwa was kidnapped and shot by two gunmen after entering a stolen taxi in Manhattan. The taxi picked him up in his East Village home, and there was a gunman, gunman hiding in the front passenger seat, jumped and fired several shots, hitting him in the groin and legs. The kidnapping was foiled when Sliwa jumped from the front window of the moving cabin and escaped, and he went surgery. So essentially, char they, got, they charged John Gotti, the son of the Gambino crime fam leader with the attempted murder on Sliwa because Sliwa was talking shit on Gotti's father on one of his radio programs. We'll get to that next. He's a radio personality, essentially. He was talking that shit. So this guy, John Gotti put a hit on him and he started a rogue subway fighting crime fighting unit. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Here's his media career. Three decades on WABC FM, did the morning drive, conservative radio talk show guy. Pretty, pretty solid dude. This guy seems like a real fucking deal. And he did a successful hostile takeover of the Reform Party of New York State. What a savage. He does not like Trump. He called him a screwball and a crackpot. Pretty crazy. He's kind of a renegade Republican. And here we go. He ran for mayor 2021, lost in a landslide to good old Eric Adams, our guy, free Adams. He ain't doing nothing. Free my boy. He ain't doing nothing. And there you go. He has anti-illegal immigration rallies all the time. He's all over on YouTube doing anti-immigration rallies. And he's a great love life. He was married four times. <laughs> and here we go. Yeah, four times. His second wife in 1981, blah, 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 blah little WABC action getting the the co-host and he had prostate cancer and yeah he, he just seems like a good dude this is a guy that I would like to be the mayor of New York City if he ever has the chance to run again he wed his longtime girlfriend his fourth wife and they live on the upper west side with their many rescue cats let's go to Curtis 
Sliwa's YouTube. Here we go. Parking is almost as difficult to get as an affordable apartment in Manhattan. Look at this guy. He got a parking ticket for $125. $125, right? Yet, if he stayed in a parking lot for a full day, it would cost about 80 bucks, 100 bucks, $20 an hour. Now, look at this. Look, look at this van. It's boxed in here. Boxed There's in no here. Way for this van to get out. The van, it's it's unbelievable. Bumper to bumper. It's Bump, bumper to in. bumper. No concern whatsoever for this driver. It's just about getting a premium parking slot. Look, <laughs> we got bike racks, we got bumper bike lanes, bumper. we got the Vespas, the motorbikes, the e-bikes. Then you got special lanes. They they. Uh, divert traffic so that you have absolutely no place to park any longer. Tell and us, look, Curtis. There's a parking spot here. Here. You could probably charge $1,000 an hour. It's such a premium place to be. <laughs> but there's no place to park in Manhattan. There's no place to put a car, a van, or a truck. Pretty soon, all it's going to be are motorbikes, Vespas, e-bikes <laughs> going up and down the sideways. Up and down the street. This is crazy. What? <laughs> Please go on YouTube. Finding affordable parking in Manhattan is almost as difficult as finding an affordable apartment. That's the title. Please go watch this gentleman. He has a red beret. He looks like a Soviet or, I don't know, the Middle Eastern Syrians. I think Syrians wear berets. He has this army beret on and this quarter zip with his name on it. And he bumper to bumper. And... This van is just sandwiched in cars, can't move. And there's a little eight-foot spot. Here's Curtis, and he's making these arm motions up and down the street. What a guy. This should be New York's mayor. This is New York personified. Why is this gentleman not in office? Four marriages, rescuing cats, out there bumper to bumper, telling the people how it is. That's what we need. All right, folks, quick episode. I think that's all we really have to talk about. The hurricane, yeah, the hurricane. Hope everyone's good down Florida. Tampa, you're good. CBS is fear-mongering again, giving evacuation orders. Don't listen to that shit, y'all. It's just a little flood. You're all right. Oktoberfest is going on. I went to one in Cannonsburg. They had gator bites there. They had Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, for those who don't know. They had gator bites there. They had gyros there. They, it wasn't much of a German fest full on through, but it was still cool to see a couple people dressed up. All right. If you're in Munich, Germany, you have a great Oktoberfest. My sister's actually there. Pretty fucking badass. And that's it. It is time for our DraftKings Gambling Report. Fanatics, we're done. Michael Rubin, we're done. I got to move on from you. I don't even use your book. Why would I promote your book? I don't even use it. DraftKings is the premier sports book. Here we go. Here we go. Our sponsors this week. C.J. Abrams, he's this baseball player, he's an all-star, and they're, he's out gambling all night, getting drunk, having a good time. It's the end of the year. Why can't he do that? The coach should lay off his case and not penalize him, but he did anyways. He sent him to single-A ball pretty messed up. The Mexican Society of Kenya is sending money for Moo. If you want cheap prescription glasses, I'm talking $10 cheap, use the code in the bottom description area with the link. Just use that and go get yourself some cheap glasses. Bojangles and Wendy's sending sponsorship along with Qatar, our anthem of the week. Here we go. Picks from last week. Steelers, Chargers, Steelers, money line. Ding, ding, ding. That's a hit. Ravens, Cowboys. We had Cowboys money line. That was our rock, 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 rock. dog of the week. And it lost. And USC Michigan, this one really hurt, folks. I thought USC was going to pull it out. USC minus five and a half. <laughs> Here we go. We went one and two last week. 94, 99, and one. We just can't get back on track. Hopefully someday we can. Georgia versus Bama. Here are our picks for this week. Georgia versus Bama. Bama money line. Ruff, 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 ruff. Dog of the week. Plus 105. Book that in your DraftKings Sportsbook. Steelers versus Colts. Steelers money line. Minus 125. That's an easy one. They will be 4-0. The Steelers are going to win the Super Bowl this year. Just wait on it. Bills Ravens. 
What a good game. Sunday, this is a powerhouse game. We're going with another rough, 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 rough. Dog of the week. Bills money line plus 110. There you go. That was the DraftKings gambling report. <laughs> Our sponsors, CJ Abrams, the Mexican Society of Kenya, Farmu, use the link below for dirt cheap prescription glasses with good quality too. They're pretty solid quality. Bojangles and Wendy's, thank you all. And that's it, folks. I hope you have a great weekend. Last weekend of September, great weather out there. Enjoy it. This is a great time to be alive. Thank you. Have a great weekend.